Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right. Uh Uh-huh. It's been a long road to get here, y'all. We have reached the E. In this tank, E means full. We're full up on the keys to caged. If you're ready for enough, I'm having celery juice. It's Saturday in our space-time continuum, and let's just get right into it, gang. Let's get warmed up on this, on the people's key of E. Anyone you got? Let's play this open E. Let's get this warm up going. Are we ready? I see you in the chat. I see a son, a Sonny. I see a Tony. I see a Michael. I see a Volta. PB's hobby. You know we're doing it. PB was worried for a second. Where are you going with my key of E? I got you right here. Let's sink our teeth into this. Adam Erickson, how are you? Kent, how are you? DJ, how are you? Wade Olson, how are you? My guitar friends in the house. Plenty more on the way. Got the crew together. Let's do it. Whatever E you got. Maybe this bar chord up here. Fifth fret bar chord, open E. Got the all the way up on the 12th fret version of it. We got maybe this one right here. That looks like that D, but now we're up here. Love it, right? Now let's do some magic here with this. We see our letters up here. We're getting to know. In fact, we're so good at this, we can just, we can already see this kind of stuff in our mind. What if we play an F sharp? Even over this sort of vamping backdrop, this loop. F sharp minor, there it is. What happens if you, we were talking about this yesterday in the member zoom hang, if you just take off the notes of the top two strings and let them ring. This is the E, the E-ness of E. Let's just do those two chords back and forth, okay? So we're going to do this open E. And then we're going to go up to this. That sounds really kind of nice, right? Back down to the E. Now, can we do that again? Take that F sharp with those open strings. And I'm not hitting the low, the low sixth string. That's kind of nice. And all that is is a G sharp minor, but we're just letting those first two strings ring. What if we take an A chord, our A major, and then we do that same game. We let those first two strings ring. Let's just try all four of those. E major, F sharp minor. Keep sliding it up to a G sharp minor, and then up to an A, then back down to E. These are things we got to make the piano players jealous about something, right? We can do these things. We can bend notes. Of course, they got their bending wheels. But this is like signature guitar sounding stuff on the guitar. Can we keep going up to what would look like a B major? All right. Down to an A. It's pretty dreamy. Oh, and that's our warm-up. We're getting right into it today. Guitar friends, I hope you're doing well. Uh, This is the key of E, E major, all right? So we've added one sharp per day. And now the E has four sharps, but it's okay because we understand the layout, right? We've got our three major chords. That's the one chord, the four chord, and the five chords. That's E, A, and B. 
and you play that in the open shapes. There isn't really an open one for B, but that's kind of, B is kind of like our first bar chord that we're sort of forced into, right? So is F, you know? An F, you know, that's not really an open chord. That's a little piece of a bar chord. Now we know. Okay, so we've got our E, A, and A, and B major. Our minor chords we were just sort of dabbling with in there with these sort of open, chimey ones that are so fun. So that's F sharp minor, that's the two. G sharp minor. And you know, maybe a few days ago we might have been a little bit thrown off or freaked out by like, oh no, sharps and flats, but here they are. They're just layering in and we can see, oh yeah, F sharp makes total sense. It's right between F and G. Same thing between the G and the A. There's gonna be a G sharp. It could also be an A flat. You may already know that. A major, B major, then C sharp minor, right? And then the D sharp, that's gonna be diminished, which is nice and cool and you know mathematically correct and it has a lot of use and context. But I would say, like I've talked about earlier this week, I kind of like to treat the D sharp with this harmonized scale that we're doing right here uh, as an opportunity to basically play a B with a D sharp in the bass. So a good spot to find that, this is something you can use often right here. If you have this shape of a bar chord, so that's that B, B major. That chord right there is a B. We're just putting the D sharp, which is the third of B in the bass. And then, you know, just to review how we sort of get that, well, what do you mean? How do you know it's a third? Whenever you lay out your uh, major scale like this, this is the E major scale, we build these triads and just think of these as notes. Forget the, the chord names there. The E, G sharp, and B, that equals an E triad. So if it's a major triad, that third, that distance of the E to the G sharp is going to be a major third. Those are just good things to know. So then if you're like, well, how do I know, you know which is which when it comes to this D sharp? It's like, oh, okay, that's going to be the third of a, a B chord, right? And I'm just writing F sharp to say, if we were to keep going with this pattern, with the E major scale, it would just repeat. So it'd be like a, it would repeat to E. And that's how we get the triad. So that can be a good way if you're like, all right, I really want to know triads. Well, then I would say just scribble out on a piece of paper or an iPad, if you have it, like the major scale. And you're going to start to get to know. And that's, that's the whole idea of this keys to caged is that, haha, I tricked you. We just learned the keys of C, A, G, E, and D, but you can take that and run with it. This is like a template or a starter kit that you now understand. If you can just lay out the notes of a major scale, then you'll be able to see what the one, four, five, the two, three, six, and yes, the seven chord would be diminished, but I kind of like that. All right, so let's play some progressions here, right? Hopefully you can hear that. The bass is booming, the drums are booming. We're in the key of E. Sound it out on your side of the screen. So I love starting with a bass note. Just try to find, just sort of play along with the bass and then you find your root notes that way, right? So if, if you can, I mostly want you to play, but if you want to sort of drop it into the chat, what is this chord progression? Using letters, using the numbers, or both? I'm gonna reveal it now. So we got the one chord, that's an E. Four chord is an A. One chord is an E again. And then a B. So that's a one, four, one, five. I think I think y'all got this. I feel like y'all got this. Okay, so we can maybe already tell that we're starting with that same one chord, that that E major. So that sort of starts our phrase here, but we got a one chord. What's that chord right there? Okay, so we can tell it's just four chords and it loops. That one right there, that's a C sharp minor. And then a couple of our old friends at this point, the four and the five. So that's an E down to a C sharp minor. Just use the chart, but also start to just know. Attack it from all angles, right? One, six, four, Five. Very handy. Very classic. Nice, nice. We're getting there. Here we go. And I'm using the same drum beats, but different. 
progressions each day. So you might be like, I think I've heard this, but that's the thing. You have to be like, wait, but is it different? And it might be a little bit different. Okay, so what do we got here? Ah, this one starts on the C-sharp minor, which is a great sound because it, the six chord is the relative minor to that, that home key of E major, right? So this is gonna be a six chord C-sharp minor. To a four chord, A major. E major, that's the one. To the five, so that's a six, four, one, five. We're moving on. Ooh, this one's kind of fun. It's moving kind of quick, but I think you're ready. Very sort of like 50s sounding. So this is a one up to a three, and then it kind of bam, 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 just walks down to a two and then a five. So E, G sharp, down to an F sharp, to a B. Playing along with the bass line. It's a real fun sound. Last one. This is the blitz. This is the part where you're like, what just happened? And then we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. This one's nice and chill. Just two chords. Just F sharp to E. Back to the beginning, right? We can play that open F sharp, which is nice and fun, to an E. Let's just jam on that. Play whatever you feel in, uh, in E major. You can mess around with this open, these chords here. These open strings, you gotta love them in E, so right here. See there were the dots, I'm playing unison. So I'm playing an E and an open E first string. And then you use that first string like a drone. Well, what notes do you play, you may be asking. I'm just playing an E major scale. Isn't it nice and fun and useful to start to find the notes of a scale that you're using or you wanna be using? if they're all spelled out on one string. This is something that came up in our conversation yesterday. It's like, well, how could that maybe help me find it? Oh, is that one? I get a little confused there. They've gotten a little overzealous there, as usual. Got a little excited, a little excited. Oh yeah, I spelled that. So there's a... There. Oh yeah, that's good to go. Right there, so that's all I'm doing, but I'm just adding the sauce of droning. You can have a whole afternoon doing that. So just make sure you break it up. Oh, we're playing, we're just gonna keep the play vibe going. This is a, this is a good little idea here. So scale on a string, that's E major. That's what it looks like on the second string. That's where it lands. And yeah, you could practice it like do, re, re. But what if you add a little something to it? So all I'm doing the whole time is just playing this. Woo, that's the drone. This is a great way to pr uh, practice the picking pattern. I'm doing down and then I'm doing up to hit that open string. That's how I do it. Hello, Joy. Bienvenidos. Really nice, pretty sound. Now, what if, what if I spell out the notes for E major on the first string? Holy camoly, I'm just using a different color. So those, it's the exact same scale. That's just where it lands on the first string. What if we flip the script and we use the second string as, as our drone? The second string is, it's got a note right there that lands inside of E major. Can you tell me, by the way, 
Where in this scale, beep, 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 using the number, what scale number does B land on? I mean, could I be more obvious? Could I be more obvious? But it's good to, to connect what flavor in this, you know, in this palette of crayons here, it's the five. And the five has a particular n nice sort of neutral sound because it's not, it's less committal. It's more like if you just have the, f the five, you have like a, it doesn't really say whether the chord is major or minor. So it is, it's a better candidate to drone with the note of a five, which is why these first two strings sound kind of nice, just sort of chiming through everything. So now we're doing scale on a string, and I'm sorry, I used green on top of green, but. So that's what I'm doing there. There's a little bit of candy. In fact, I'll, I'll stop the track. We're getting a little bit, a little bit over vibed with the track, but let's see if we have this. So I'll just sort of play a droning E thing. I want you to mess with these ideas right here. Let's see if I can do like a, um, no, what was that thing? Was that? Right, that's fun, so. <laughs> that bass Octavizer. So I'm doing a pull off and then hitting the second string. This would be a great way to, to quiz yourself on the, the degrees, the notes of an E major scale, if you were to say it as you play it. So if I were to just kind of like, oh, all right, what's that? That's the seventh fret first string. I know that's a B. Oh, and then be like, oh, that's the fifth of the scale. Oh, great. And then uh, what's this one? Oh, that sounds like a, a major third. Oh yeah, that's gonna be, and then check your math and be like, oh, that's a G sharp in E and you just start to get these to be like familiar characters to be like, well, E, I know I'm gonna have an A, cause that's like one, four, five. That starts to get kind of, to be like second nature. And then just play with the actual sound of it. Don't get too caught up in like analyzing it. Once you get something you like, be like, ah, I'm gonna spend a couple, couple minutes right here or more just a little thing. Now I'm going back to the second string. And you hear me do this a lot whenever I'm noodling in this key. You'll hear me do these kind of like... Where I'm just sort of incorporating those open, those awesome, comes with a standardly tuned guitar, first and second strings that go with E. The last one I'll show you, oh my gosh, I wish Galen was here. Maybe he is, he's gonna see it. Galen, whenever you see this, this is your actual answer. I got it for you. I think this is good. I think this will be helpful. I'm um, just looking for a different color. I'll use the classic here color. So the last string that I'm gonna show you, the, the scale, the E major scale, is on the third string. And I hope this starts to make sense with like, oh yeah, I mean, if I were to draw an E, open chord right there. Oh yeah, that kind of makes sense that, that this note right here, that white note right there, of course that's an E major because that's in an E major chord. That's the chord. I got so excited there. I raised that. Oh no, I went too far. There. Okay. So that's a G sharp. That's an A. That's a B. That's a C sharp. That's an E. That's an F sharp. And that's a G sharp. So now, if you were to play those white notes and play these like almost like triads, just three note clusters, you're, but you're just strumming like those three strings, then you've got these really cool. Ooh, I went to a wrong note, but that would be a flat seven. I 
like that kind of stuff. And that'd be a great way to just sort of zone out and be like, all right, I'm learning this third string, haha, because I got my E right here. You'll be more motivated to stay in it longer because you'll be like, oh, that kind of sounds vibey or cool. Obviously, you could be doing this over a genre of music that you dig a little bit more if this, is, if this all sounds a little too, you know, it's, it's season to taste. Find your own jam tracks you like and then just be like, all right, third string, I'm coming for you. E major, you're toast, I gotcha. What do we think of that, gang? What do we think of that? Happy Saturday. What's the temperature where you are? Hey, that's that. This is this. And there we are. Look at that. If you're just checking out the channel for the first time, welcome. You might be here after enjoying, hopefully, the five days, the five keys to cage. What do I call it? Where do I put this thing? I think I have some sort of a jobby do here, technical term here. Boink. The five keys to cage. We got to unlock these keys. We got to use the keys to unlock the... Oh, boy. And then I put it in the wrong spot. Technology is your best and worst friend when you're having a good time. All right. That's the guy, kind of. Five keys to unlock cage. What am I talking about? Is this what I'm talking about? We're doing the key of E. And we have, earlier this week, we have done, you know, C, G, D, A, and now E. And we did them in the sequence of the circle of fifths, which is quite handy. It's quite handy to take your time with the circle of fifths and not always feel like it's this blob of information where you're like, uh, like the Da Vinci Code. You can be like, all right, one key at a time. And so if you want to take the free course, there's a link in the description and it'll start you at day one. We just did these. So like these are hot off the press and they're these daily workouts. Today is the deluxe extended version. We're taking our time a bit, but normally these workouts are just like 15, 20 minutes long. And we just do something like this. I, I mostly try to emphasize, even though you can tell I like to talk a lot, talk a lot. Um, I emphasize just sort of playing and diving into it. Little little snippets and progressions that are like, oh, okay, I hear it. Because you got to see it and hear it and feel it for it to all stick to your ribs. Uh, what do we got here? Five. Oh, uh, that's not your temperature. That's from earlier. That's way too. But when I see these low numbers, I believe it could be. We've got Tim Taylor, who's literally lives on the North Pole. Yeah, negative 51. Tim Taylor. How does he type with the fingers frozen? Is it fingerless gloves you got there? I just picture you just hanging by a thread. But by now, you probably you probably got it figured out. You probably know how to make it through. Um, supposed to be sunny. Oh, man. Yeah. You pray for the pray for the sunshine. Try to give you just a little bit of sweet reprieve joy it was good to see you thanks for stopping by um yeah th this is a fun day because by the way we're also going to be i know many of you already know this we're going to be unveiling by pure chance and chaos wheel the winner of the dare to share challenge it's been a heck of a month i'm really excited for it i'm really proud of my people and there were a lot of uh, guitarists in my members area that are probably just like me, cut from the same cloth, wait until the 11th hour, the 11.5 hour, the 11, 11, 11.59, and submitting some videos. I think I got everybody to fit on the Wheel of Chaos because it was a sort of thing where if you entered more times, it, limit to three entries, it would increase your chances. I think we're good. I think we're in there. And the prize is a pretty good looping pedal. I say pretty good because I think I've determined it's shortcoming. It costs like 20 bucks. I'll get I'll get endorsements. See, the more hey, if you're watching this, like and subscribe, we'll build up the channel. I'll get big name brands and it all comes back around to you cuz we do these challenges and contests and giveaways. Just a little something to motivate the uh, you know, the human being that wants a little bit of hey, what's in it for me? I get it. We're all just uh, organisms out here being like, "All right, I could get the butterflies and share a song of my own in this forum, but never hurts to have a little bit of cherry on top. So that's what we did. We're going to be announcing that in a little bit. Oh my gosh, 40 degrees, for, yeah, 4 Celsius, 40 Fahrenheit. Why did we ever, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love our system of measurements here. Has anyone seen that Nate Bargatze uh, sketch that was on SNL a few months ago? It's really good. He's George Washington, and he's basically explaining why why they're fighting for freedom in 776. And it's basically mostly so that they can have their own form of wacky measurements, which we do now. It's great. Chaos. Cha-cha-cha. 
Chaos Music City, me and Michael Butler, Nashville. It's not bad today, right? Yesterday and today in Nashville, I feel like it smells and sounds like spring. The, the birds chirping, squirrels running around, the sort of like something, it just feels like, I don't know if we're going to head right back into a crazy cold snap in February, but here we are, Groundhog Day, uh, the day after. Anybody else like Groundhog Day? I, anyway, I'm just rambling here, but that's what I do. That's half of what I do here. Must be the celery juice. We just got that high-end juicer for Christmas. Let me show you this little video that just sort of summarizes this Dare to Share challenge that we just wrapped up. I got to dream up a new one for February. I think we're going to do one per month. And uh, I think it should be pretty good. So let's see if this plays. Um, Big yeah, guitar, right? there we go. One, I got a lava lamp for Christmas and it's the best. Two, I got this hat and it's pretty cool. And three, I got this little loop pedal to give away to whoever dares to share the most. It's a looper. I got it off of Amazon for like 20 bucks and you're going to win it. Each time you post a video of you playing guitar. Limit three, from limit one three. Of the three <laughs> gauntlets. So grab the backing track from the soul strums, the groovy gaps, or the uh, funk chunk. Yeah. And play along with it, either playing the parts that are in there or some parts that you made up that counts as an entry into the dare to share do it by the end of the month you only have till the end of the month to the end of january enter dare share you got this Hooray! Hooray! yay that's what it's all about gang um i just saw the question tim taylor asked how was the symphony i, I went to the symphony last night it was fantastic it was honestly like oh my gosh i could i'll just say for now if you get a chance, go see some live symphony orchestra playing and just close your eyes and just let it hit you because there was a Mozart piece in the middle. And man, obviously we've we've heard Mozart before, but to hear it live, there was so much, it seems so silly. It's like, there were so many pop chord progressions in there, I swear, especially after doing what we've been doing. It was like little snippets where I was like, oh, that was into the mystic for a split second or like, Oh, Shania Twain or whatever. It's like, it's the other way around, buddy. It's like, they've been stealing from Mozart, but then the complexity and just like the things where you're just like, I don't know what's going on here. I think this is what genius sounds like. I'm just going to vibe with it and then have real live musicians just doing it. You know, like if they don't hit it in the right spot, it doesn't happen. So it's all just, it's all the things. Maybe I've just matured to that point where I'm going to be one of those contributing members to a symphony society. Yeah, real deal. And just all these like top notch players. And it's Music City. It was a night to remember. Um, I want to dive in and continue to talk a little bit more about this E major. Because if you're here, it's like, oh, when does he stop talking about the contest or whatever? I'm just here to learn my notes. Then I'll give you a little bit more. And this will kind of be what we've been talking about this week with each key. Let's make sure we've got that squared away. I really like these dots here, these these notes on a string. So I'm going to leave those there. Actually, you got them. If you need to find them, you can reference them. You can pause the screen and all that. Um, because the thing that we've been doing with the other keys, it'd be good to just make sure we flesh that out here as well, which is to have the the shapes, those classic, the T shape and the L shape, the who and the hua hua. So here's our E on the fifth string, correct? And if we draw this T shape, see how if we do that? It's sort of like a elongated T right there, like as in guitar friend Tim. Guitar friend Tim courses in community now available 14 day free trial. I'm just saying. Anyway, there's our E. Find the root, spell the chord off of it. E major. I'll go here for a little bit. Right here. That's a five chord. Right here, C sharp minor, six chord to a four chord. These are really good building blocks that if you need a slightly different chord, if you need a two chord, a three chord, but you start to see this shape, you'll be able to get there and then quickly find it. So let's say you're, you're less familiar at the moment with how to find an F sharp minor, but you're really starting to get to know where this E sort of shape is in this cluster of chords. You can see in your mind, oh, there's the E, and like, oh, well, the F sharp's only gonna be, you know, a whole step away, two frets away. And you just will see a lot of chords and progressions that are like, oh. So, meat and potatoes, good to have, good to know. Um, boom, we're moving right along to the other shape, which 
lands here on the open strings quite a bit. And that's a great spot to have that open E, open A, the B, and then this C sharp minor. Here's a, a sort of a fun little candy chord I'm going to show you. And it lands perfectly on the B here. So this is just a really nicely suspended B chord. So typically it's like, whoa, hold on. I thought that's B, yes. But um, just know that this shape is fun and you can hold it on guitar with one finger. And you can sometimes use it whenever you feel like it to replace the five chord, which would normally be a B. And like we've been talking about, the B, the five chord, is the one that you can turn into a, a seven chord, that you can turn into a dominant seven. And that is because if we were to keep going with this B, D, and then we would go F sharp, because there's that E, we're skipping over those letters, there's an E, F sharp, G sharp, and then A, that spells, sorry for my handwriting, that spells a four note chord that is a B7. That is why the five chord in a major you know, scale setting will always sound great if you turn it into a seven. Now, great is subjective, but it also, it'll just sound logical because you introduce this flat seven, that G, uh, sorry, uh, A, that goes down to a G sharp. That's why, the, that's why the five chord wants so badly to go back. Just go to your home. And the reason I sort of spell that out is that this chord right here, you can kind of start to see, oh, if we just take a regular B and then we lower that to make it a B7, and then we just keep playing that game. Okay, it's a B7, now what if we lower this? That's the third. Now we make it, so, oh, now it's a nine. Oh, now we take this fifth. That's the fifth of the B, that's the F sharp. That becomes a fourth. I know I'm just sort of flying through this. You don't need to be scribbling it down. It's just like, oh, okay, so this is basically a B7, which has some suspensions to it which is just kind of jazzy and cool. So th these are good sort of um, novelty chords this is maybe too trite of a way to say it, but if you're playing an E, to A, to B. What if you're like, all right, this time around, I'm gonna try a, a B7 instead. Okay, well this time I'm gonna try this uh, fancy suspended chord that guitar friend Tim showed me. It's kind of a good sort of like smooth sounding suspenseful chord. Because it really wants to. All right, name that tune, name that riff. Super J17, you know. John. John with the subversive lyrics for the win. Okay. Let's let's do some Saturday game mode here. Let's do some of you may love it, you may hate it, but this is I like I like this ear training app. It's called Chet. You've heard me blab about it. By the way, let's check in on them doggies. Hi Lolly. Wouldn't want to interrupt. This is there's Lolly Bobali. Tony Baloney. Hi, Lolly. How you doing? Yeah, that's a sweetie girl. They are some sweet little dogs. Those are the beds that they got for Christmas. You know, they're not the most luxurious beds, but they match. Okay. Um, going to open this app. And then maybe we'll be, we'll be a little bit closer to announcing the winner of the Dare to Share. Don't go running off on me after we announce the winner. Okay, here's a bit of ear training. And in fact, I'll make it B in the key of E. I think I can do that. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. So I'm changing it to be the key of E major. So it's the key that we're using today. So you can practice along with your guitar. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to hear a quick little chord progression snippet. And it'll be, I think this round is only using one, four, five, and six. So those are your choices. And it'll play it and I'll, I'll hit repeat. So in the chat, write your answer. Hello, Jeffrey Quest. Welcome. We're playing ear training, E major, and it's chord progressions. One, four, five, and six. So it'll be either an E, A, B, or C sharp. You'll be playing along on your side and then enter into the chat just using regular numbers, like just say like one, four, five, six. I think you get it. Here we go. We'll repeat it. Here we go. All right. Send in your answer. And I will go with the, you know, I will be a man of the people. Whatever the people decide, I will go with. So I'll play it one more time. And that's good. You can't see the fretboard, so you can't totally see what I'm playing. Can't totally give it away. What do we got? We got a one, five, six, four. We got a one, six, four, five. We got a one, five, six, four. We got a one, five, six, four. All right, let's try it. And here's the thing. It, it you know, registers the answers as we go. So one, one, five. Oh, we got a bonk for that. Mm, so it's not one, five. Let's see, is it one, six? We got one, six. Oh, we got a bonk for that. Okay, one, four, five, six from Michael. Okay. Shaboing. All right. It's making us repeat it. One, four, five, and before, if I hit it, it'll go to the next one. So that's one, four, five, six. Ooh, just two chords, but a bit deceptive, is it not? Is it not? Let's see, I'll make sure my hand is out of the shot. This could be, this one's a really fun sort of like two chord vampable progression. What do we got, gang? T uh, check your math. Don't be afraid of mistakes. We thrive on them here. There's a song by Michael Penn, and I can't play it because if I play it, it'll demonetize the, the video, but it's like, uh, what's it called? No Myth? He says it's time to go But wanted to be sure I know She hopes we can be friends So that's a 1-6, back and forth Just going back and forth Hmm, this sounds like we did this one already Moving on Okay, check your math on the other side of the screen. Tony's shaking it up now. We got a one. Oh, I played the wrong one. So I played the wrong order there. It's actually. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got, gang? First chord is one. Listen to that. Listen to those first two chords. Just really focus on that. And what's great is that the piano has different voicings, so what you hear on top might be throwing it off a little bit, right? So this is a one, I believe. One, five, four. Six. Oh, we'll do one more. Oh, uh, we already had that one. Wait, what? Hey, what? Oh no, my gosh! Oh, whoa! Pardon me, Chet. Pardon me. Okay, it flipped it on us. That's the thing, there, right? You gotta really try to listen to the the low note of it. We'll repeat it. So bum, bum. if you hear that bass line, it's the switcheroo of that other. Oh, 
they're making us try it again. Six one. This will be this will be our last one. This one seems kind of tough. Let's try it. Okay, so I'll tell you, I believe it starts on, I'll just show you. It starts on the four chord. So it starts on the A. And then where does it go from there? Isn't it crazy how these four chords, I mean even three chords, you can combine them in so many different ways. So it's a four chord, and then it goes to a one chord. So this is what I really am excited for you to start getting comfortable with, is that chord progressions, just like scales and phrases and licks, they don't often you know, start on just the home key, the home note. So a lot of the scaleitis that we hear when we're practicing a scale too much, just top to bottom, is that we, we always start and end it on the, on the E, on the root note. And there's something good about that to ground your ear in it, to get familiar with it. But if you're only ever doing that, you're missing out on all these possibilities where you start on different. And then it resolves, right? So that's my little spiel within the spiel. Four, one. So four, one, five, six. I won't play it the last one because it'll keep on going. But so that's a four, one, A. To e b and that's just such a great progression right let's let's jam out on that a little bit i think i can do this with the looper looper my duper jam a little bit on this it's, and the progression is a four one five six let's play with E major right you know where to find E major pentatonic it's this one right here it looks like the C sharp minor pentatonic because it also is so there's that right you got that Let's do the scale on a string thing. First string. This is E major. And this is helpful because the first string and the sixth string have the same note names, so you're going to be pretty familiar with these, right? Just imagine you're looking at the sixth string, but now you're playing melody. One, two, three, two, one. E, F sharp, G sharp, F sharp. Maybe try playing the bass line, but on the first string, so. That could be a cool exercise to be like, all right, I can find the root notes, but what do I play over it? Start by playing just the roots, but up an octave. In this case, up two octaves. And then can you start to hear places where you don't go all the way to the root? Right? Then suddenly, what sounds like, oh, I'm just walking down a major scale, it, it locks in with the chords better, right? So there's the A, it's the name of the chord, that's the third of the E, that's the fifth of the B, and then the E is part of the... <laughs> then right on down the second string. So sometimes we just see all these dots thrown us at us at once and it makes it seem like all dots are equal. Any one of these dots will equal a um, a non-wrong note. And it's like, yeah, that'll get you in the game, but you want to be able to play with some in intention, right? Thank you. 
that's a vibe, right? That's our E major vibe. That's enough info, I believe, for this workout and this session. Um, what do we think? Do we feel like we're ready to find out who the lucky winner of a looper pedal? See, when I do these looping things, granted, I'm not, I'm not using the looper pedal that someone's going to win. But let me, let me show you what it's like to use this one. Here's what I've discovered. Even when you hit the button in the right spot on the loop, it'll sound like you missed it. But if you, if you did hit it in the right spot and you give it a couple go arounds, you'll realize, oh, it, I think it did record it in the right spot. It just created like a little bit of a hesitation before it continued on. Um, am I selling this free pedal enough? I'm, I don't know if they'll ever, ever see this. The people at An, An Moon? I, and, and Moon and Sun, you shall loop, my friend. So let's try that same thing. Um, ding, dong. I think I hit it in the right spot. All right. So as long as you can get over that initial sounds like it was a little bit off, but now it's it is correct. It's just got one button. That's the beauty of it. Oh, sorry. I got to go down to flip a switch. It's fun though. That's crazy. So apparently I was in half speed mode, which you probably figured out. And then by going up to full speed, it went to chipmunk mode. Not going to be that useful. There's another switch that goes reverse mode. Um, I'm getting my last chances with this looper before I send it off into the wild to be free. So let's do a different progression here. Three, four. I may have jumped the gun there. Yeah, not its finest work, not its best stuff, but you'll figure out what to do with it and then you'll share and it'll all come back around. Are we ready, gang? Ho, 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 ho. I think we are. We need more suspenseful, faster music for this one. Let me switch over to my loops here. See if I can drum up a little more chutzpah. This is the this is the one. It's way too fast. Way too fast. Okay, gang. It's time. Let me get this going. Get this wheel lined up. And just so you know, I was testing it out. So right now it says Brett's name on it, but that was just a test run. Brett did not win. So everybody just cool your jets. Who's excited? If you're excited to see who wins or to see if you yourself have won, drop an emoji in the chat that is the most intense emoji, no eggplants, but the most intense emoji that you think represents the uh, energy that's in the air right now. Brett did not win. Brett, keep it cool, keep it cool. Kent is feeling excited. Yeah, I know. Kent really, really wants this. And I believe that you can manifest. It's not too late to manifest your dreams. Mr. Kent. And I, I, I'm i sorry if I didn't announce it clearly enough that you could do multiple entries. Kent was a little bit kicking himself, being like, ah, I should have entered three times. Um, so I believe in here, the only reason I'm not resetting this spin wheels, because when I did that earlier, it like dropped off a bunch of names, which would be catastrophic. So maybe you can see in there. Yeah, you can see it in the dimmed out names. You got um, caged bots in there. You got Adam three times, Ricky in there three times, Daniel, John, Tim Taylor, the other Tim, just so you know, I'm not in there. Okay. I, there's so much suspense. I, 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 I'm trying to work you guys up into a froth and be so excited. You know what? This is just a quick reminder before we spin this wheel. This is the kind of stuff that we get into. Um, where's the thingy? In the courses and the community of Guitar Friend Tim. You can get your 14 day free trial. I'm sure the link is below. Just head to guitarfriendtim.com. This is, I think, number 66. 
We've got over 65 daily workouts that you can search. You can search it by top. You can search it by topic. You can enter keywords and you can zero in right on exactly what you want to study. And I'm adding these uh, things that are called spice levels. These sort of like, if it's one pepper, it's level one, two, and three. So if you're feeling like I just want something easy today, or that's the level I'm at, that's great. You're gonna get feedback. Look at all these wonderful people here. We're chiming in. We're cheering each other on. It's it's a good vibes kind of conduit. We've got, I've got five self-paced courses so far. Those are those gauntlets you might hear me mentioning. And those are really fun, kind of like smaller versions of courses than you're used to because I want it to be manageable so you can get into triads and soloing and rhythm and groove and all these things using kind of like real chunks of music that I make here, obviously, with all the bells and whistles. Okay, okay, let's get into this. Let's do it. Are we ready? If you're ready, let me know. If you're ready, ready, ready. Here we go. I think we're ready. We're going to tap to spin. It's going to clickety-clack and go for about 20 seconds. Here we go. Baby bang And we're off. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to find out who dared, who shared, compared, and it's slowing down. Is it going to be Tim T? Is it going to be one of the many Adams? Is it going to be Ricky? Is it hanging out for Adam? Oh, Lord Almighty. Ricky. Ricky takes it. Don't lose that number, Ricky. Oh, my gosh. Can we can we give it up for Ricky? Ricky really did swoop in with a lot of shares at the end. But look at how close it was. Tim T, Adam, Brett, Ken, Kent, John, DJ, Galen, even Cagebot got in there. I'm proud of all y'all. Well done. I think Ricky, the, we're all going to benefit from this because when Ricky starts using this loop or lookout, he's, he's a really great player. And when he starts showing us some videos and we can all kind of be the squeaky wheels and be like, hey, how's that looper working out for you? Be sure nice if we could hear some of that looper in action. And then we can all just sort of see if he actually uses it. That's the beauty of this stuff. Way to go. Way to go. Um, Ricky, congratulations. I'm sure you're going to see this and you're going to rejoice. And um, Ricky and I had a good talk earlier this week. We've been doing, I've been doing some conversations with some of my members and finding out where they're at and what they're working on and what they want some more of and all that. Inside the courses in the community. I'm new at this whole sales thing, but I, I can be pretty cheesy, right? That's sort of part of, that's in my wheelhouse. But this type of thing we did today, that's the real-time feedback and accountability in the best possible way. It's that healthy peer pressure where it's like, hey, you know what? I think I'll be all right if I try this. So we hope you try it out. And again, if you want to uh, take the entire Keys to Cage course that we were sort of wrapping up the fifth day here, and the irony, it's like Back to the Future. If you're seeing this, you already did. You've made it. Now you can click on the link and go back and take it again and, uh, I don't know, meet your parents or something, however that works. But you've entered the time loop, and we're glad to have you. Um, are there any questions while we're just hanging out and vibing in this last stretch here of the stream? Any thoughts, feeling, comments, concerns? I've got another little spiel I can give just on the heels of my the topic of my email. Let me know, have any of you played that game Super Off-Road, do you remember? The, am I alone? Does anyone else remember that game, Super Off-Road? Or maybe you're encountering it now because they have a lot of these sort of vintage arcade games where you can get beers and play unlimited games. And I see it quite a bit in those kind of spots. And I tell you what, I go right for it. And I think I'm a lot better now than I ever was as a kid. I've got the, I've done a lot more driving. I lived in LA for 10 years. So um, yeah, I learned how to... Work, that's how you drive in LA, basically. It's exactly the same level of intensity you need. You know, it's hit or be hit. That's all I say. Nitros to work. DJ knows that game chewed your quarters up. Ate a lot of loonies. He's Canadian. Um, so much money on it. Yeah. Okay, good. No, Kent, it's okay. I, I'm not going to do it now, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll look up to see if they're still selling that looper and drop a link you can knock yourself out and treat yourself. Kent has this awesome tiny uh, Fender amp that they make, those ones that are like the mini mini. And I was joking with him. It looked like it was just very far away in the background of his video. But actually, that's just the size it is. It was like right next to him. And I think 
it would go perfectly with that amp. Crank them, crank them both up to 11 and just tear the roof off. Never hoid of it. Yeah. It's uh, for us nerds around this age demographic, it, it was a good game. And the metaphor that it made me think of basically is that within this game, um, I don't know if I have a, a graphic or something I can pull up. I think I can actually. On the fly, perhaps. Just the gameplay. Oh my gosh, the graphics. Am I right? The graphics were stunning. That's the thing about all these old games is that whenever you get excited and try to pull them up like on like retro game emulators and try to show anyone, it's like, huh? What? Yeah, no, this was the best. See all those tiny little pickup trucks? So here's the thing. You what was kind of cool is that it was confusing because you were driving around this course so you had to your direction was all screwed up you'd be going up and left and all around and so as you're steering you're not driving from the driver's perspective which was just a nice little confusing detail of the game that that made it more exhilarating when you got the hang of it but the reason that it came to mind was that in that game once you finish a race you go into the speed shop and in the speed shop you can upgrade with your prize winnings Obviously, if you finish first, you have more money to spend. You can try to upgrade your truck, and you should, because the other trucks are going to get faster whether you like it or not. So you have to decide where you're going to allocate your funds. And you could like improve your tires, get new tires, you know, in increase the top speed of your engine, and get shocks and all that kind of stuff. But those are pretty expensive, and you, you can only maybe like go up one notch at a time. So you can't really you know just upgrade the whole truck all at once, or and or you could buy these nitros. Nitros are cheap and they're fast and they are they are fun. And they are what they sound like. It's just this turbo boost where you just go flying for a couple seconds, literally in front of whatever's in your way. You'll shoot to the front of the pack and you can win a lot of races just by mashing those turbos and you can pick them up while you're out there on the, the course. So they are the most fun and the most immediate sort of results. You see where I'm going with this. Within guitar, sometimes as grownups, we get a little bit, and just so you know, there's no like, this is the right way or the wrong way. But I would say, imagine if you were trying to upgrade your truck, upgrade your playing, and all the different categories that come to mind with all the videos that are out there on triads and pentatonics and caged and scales and yada, 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 and rhythm and all the nuances of listening. And as soon as you think you got one thing down, then there's a new topic that comes up. And that's in a way, part of what's great about guitar, right, is that it keeps going. But that does take a lot of time, and you can't necessarily just figure it all out and upgrade your whole truck in one day. So if you're just constantly sort of leapfrogging and dabbling in different topics, you're, you're going to have very minimal improvement, which over time will build up, and you'll be a better overall player if you can keep improving. That's great. But that can get pretty tiring if you don't have constant you know consistent practice and ways to test it and hear it you can get a little bit lost thinking like where is this all going and so nitros are there and for me nitros are the equivalent to like learning a riff that from a song you love that you've always loved or just playing whatever it is playing a triad shape that you just dig and getting lost playing that over a jam track um it is that boost of sort of like you know a bit of fruit punch or something that just sort of feels like for me, fruit punch was, was pivotal growing up, but like something you look forward to something that gets you back into playing, wanting to pick up the guitar and play that, that little thing that you've been working on that that's, you know, the intro to little wing or something like that. And then you might just stay a while and say, you know, I'll decide to, to upgrade my shocks today. I'll decide to really dig into like how my strumming can sound smoother and, and I'll, I'll do that thing with that video that I saw that guy, guitar friend Tim, showing me where I'm just, just working on, you know, zeroing in and all that. And you can file that away knowing like, okay, today I upgraded this category of my truck that I'm going to start to see results. But I also won the race. And winning the race in this case is just literally staying in it. Like as long as you're coming back to play the guitar, I'm all for nitros. And, and one final note is that there's a lot a lot of our guitar heroes that we think of, they leaned heavy on the nitros, meaning they have a signature move that got them to the point where they were playing a solo that had emotion or writing songs because they just 
They found their signature move, their power move, their thing, and the rest could just wait. And maybe they never even, maybe they never felt that, oh man, I'm I'm BB King. I know how to play one note and make you cry, but gosh, I wish I knew every note on the fretboard. Just remember that like a lot of the people that inspired you to get into playing this thing were just going on their instincts and what they liked and the rest could just sort of... So make of that what you will. Find your balance between those instant hits of inspiration, gratification, fun. And and then if you're hovering around the guitar more, you keep it out of the case. You're able to pick it up and feel like you got a thing that gets you going. Then maybe see if it's time to like, all right, I'm going to buckle down and you know figure out how to play a G in 10 different ways up and down the neck. But do it because you decided to do it, not because some knucklehead on the internet said like, get the five keys to playing in the... Even though I am kind of playing that game, I'm hoping that we sort of sneak you into a mode of being like, hey, I like this. Great. The moment you say, hey, I like this, my work here is done. And then because then you look up and an hour has gone by when you said you were just going to play for five minutes. Ha ha. <laughs> I made you a guitar player. And you didn't even know it. Um, what do we think, gang? No, don't do it, Kent. Don't. Don't go down the spiral of missing a looper, the, the downward loop. You got this, Kent. I believe in you. And you know what? Maybe you weren't meant to be a looper. You were just meant to play live original music. That was the thing about seeing the symphony last night, is that it literally dawned on me. It seems so obvious until you see it. It's like, oh, when this symphony debuted, you know, the Mozart one in 1781 or something, like, if you weren't there, you missed it. There's no recording of it. You might have heard about it, like, oh my God, Mozart was off the chain last night, but it's like, you had to be there. And so as far as looping and recording and all that, it was just like, it happened, and then it was in your ears and in your heart and back out into the wild. It's very cool if you, if you kind of like realize like, yeah, you don't get another shot. There it was. Um, just reading some of the comments here. Just got to keep racing. Exactly right. That's a good reminder, Adam. Yeah, I, the analogy does kind of hold up where it's like another race, another chance to pick up some more momentum and some wins and some, you know, some some new energy to keep going. That's what these daily workouts are all about. It's like I've started enjoying doing them live, live. For a while, I was trying to figure out the the format so I could just keep up with the the workflow of it. But now I really feel like we've got a good thing. A bunch of members are showing up with me. I do it 7 p.m. most weekdays, um, Nashville time. And then on Fridays, we do our member Zoom hang, which is kind of a chance to like circle back and see if there's any questions and just hang and do some other stuff guitaristically. Um, but that's pretty much where I'm at. I appreciate you all being here. Congrats again to Ricky. We're going to make sure Ricky track him down. But you know what? If Ricky spontaneously combusts, can we all agree that Kent, <laughs> Kent would be the runner up? It really felt like Kent was the next spot on the wheel. I don't know where the wheel was, but felt like the chaos was headed Kent's way. Um, thank you, Jeffrey. I appreciate you being here. Uh, appreciate you all with the kind words. It's, we're still in the early days of this, but I think once we hit 100 members officially, that's when I will announce a special, you know, just a nice thing for my founding 100 members. So if you're joining us now, you're in the really kind of early stages to shape how all this goes. And so it means a lot that you're putting in the time, not just to play and show up for yourself, but to show up for each other. And that's the real scoop. A Zoom G1X4, yeah, multi-effects, yep. I, the Zoom pedal was the first one that I had. The multi-effects, I, I love them. Yeah, that was like my main thing, the very first effects I had. And I know they make great stuff still, but it was like, that was a big deal to be able to have like, Chorus, distortion, and all, all the different things all in one spot. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff, gang. Vota. Oh, yeah, Zoom 505. Yeah, I, that sounds familiar, too. I might have had something like in that same um, model number range. Got in the ground floor. That's right. Yeah, we're selling timeshares here. So on the shares of the fretboard, it's like, we got this beautiful spot. You can spend half the year here. It's right around the fifth and seventh fret. Incredible views of the ocean. And you can, beautiful spots to bend, you know, not too tough, not too easy. And you can find your way around and there's a Starbucks on every corner. Anyway, that's me doing the kind of stuff I do. I'll just put on some jamming tracks or whatever. What do we got? Do we have this? There's nothing left there. Let's put on one of these. 
Oh, this one's kind of fun. So this is that sort of classic one that's... And then you can do that. That's that fancy B. The fancy B. All right, gang. Thanks for hanging out with me. Happy Saturday. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. If you're interested in what we're doing here, you know how to find it. Links in the whatever and everywhere. Be good to yourself. Play in all the keys. Keep finding those nitros. We'll see you next time. Great work.